Hello everybody, welcome to Andrew's Arts and Models. If you're new here, uh, for those of you that have been here before, hello again. Uh, yes, you are seeing my disheveled face. I have a, um, a new webcam now, so I'm going to be popping up from time to time. As you can see, I went all out and left the beard all messy and you know didn't do the hair. Um, I am currently sitting in my study. So I do all my reading in here, my drawing in here. Uh, all my models in here and what I'm showing you behind me is actually the neatest part of it. Uh, so excuse the mess, I do apologise. Uh, today I'm going to actually be doing a tutorial, first part of the tutorial on drawing the Millennium Falcon. So it's probably going to be two parts uh, just to get through it because it's a, quite a big job. But it's a very popular ship and I've had a lot of people ask me about uh, how I do my drawings, what I do, what I do now is different to what I used to do. Uh, so it's improved it a bit. But I thought, well, good subject to start on, very popular, uh, everyone likes it. And there's also some really good references out there now, thanks to Bandai's awesome kit. Um, which brings me to the next thing. Uh, we're going to have some good deals coming your way uh, via this channel. Uh, with a big thank you to Darren from Tokyo Model Detectives. So uh, we're working on trying to set up something for you all. And uh, it is pretty exciting. I can't say too much about it just yet. I sort of probably already said more than I should. But uh, for all the model makers out there and all the Star Wars fans, everything like that, some awesome stuff coming uh, our way, thanks to Darren. Uh, if anyone of you don't know who Darren is, uh, you can order all your, your Bandai kits through him, essentially. So all your Star Wars kits and, and others he's got. Um, excellent service, and I've used him quite a bit. Most of the models you actually see over here. Uh, I've actually come from Darren, so I've you know I've purchased through him plenty of times. Love it. Uh, so enough talking. Let's get started on the tutorial, shall we? Okay. So here we are. Now, as you can see, I've already done a line drawing uh, of the Millennium Falcon, and I currently work on a Wacom Cintiq Companion Two, or Wacom Cintiq Companion Two. Um, I used to do everything on paper or canvas, and uh, unfortunately, the cost of getting images transferred into digital format so I could sell them online was just getting ridiculous. Uh, for example, the last A2 sketch that I did, um, I needed to get it photographed because it was graphic. Uh, it was uh, graphite, sorry. It was a sketch of a P51. And the cheapest price I could find for someone to photograph it without color correction was $150 for a photograph. Went right. Um, so I'm not going to bother with that anymore. So I went out and uh, did a bit of research on what my options were and um, came up with uh, the Cintiqs. And uh, I have to say I was really nervous about spending the money on it, uh, but I love it. It is really, really good. I still do all my work exactly the same way as I did before. Uh, so I do my preliminary sketches, so on and so forth, work out my designs, same way as I would as I'm working with pencil and paper. A um, <clears throat> couple of advantages, excuse me, everyone, a couple of advantages is I can undo things that I don't like. So, for example, um, I've got a touch feature on at the moment. Uh, let's pick a brush and let's just pick a random color. There we go, black. Or tone um, and let's go to the image now if I did something like that on a drawing and I did on paper I would have ruined it on this I can just go back fantastic love it uh, saves you a lot of headaches especially if you're painting something it saves you a lot of headaches I was very good at painting myself into a corner and then having to spend time to correct it so Millennium Falcon it's all good for me to show you a um, image like this and go, oh yeah, 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 I drew it. It's not really going to help you. So how do you get to this stage? All right. So for some of you who are not too sure, and I do apologize about the um, resolution. For some reason, the uh, webcam doesn't want to focus in on it, probably because it's a screen, but <clears throat> excuse me. So let's show you how I got to this stage. All right. So Millennium Falcon is easy to draw and it's difficult to draw. Uh, it's easy because the, the shape of the ship is actually really quite simple. Uh, it's basically a big disc, right? Um, give the disc a bit of a gap and then draw another one below and there you got your depth. 
uh, come up a bit, draw another disc, and away you go. All right, it's really simple. Uh, draw a line across the front to line up with the front of that, and then draw your little wedge shapes that they've got on the front of the, um, the ship. Now, <clears throat> this is not very hard, and I'll just show you. We'll just go over it. All right, so you just do this very basically, very simply. All right, so just do it in red. So basically, all I do, is I'm just going to zoom out a tiny bit. All right. It's just rough in a circle. Oh, turn the touch feature off. That's one thing I've got to get used to. All right. So rough in a circle. So there's my rough circle. And I'm, my drawing's a bit haphazard because I've got the camera in a way. So forgive me. I'm getting used to it. It's my first broadcast, everybody. Um, all right. There's your starting point. And it doesn't matter what angle the ship's going on, that's always going to be your starting point is your disc. So say I want a one coming that way, I would just go, all right, well, here's my disc. There's my depth. Uh, here's the top section. Um, what do we have there? We have the, the bits coming off the side. Right, this is obviously very small, so very simple, but you get the idea. All right, so that's it's really basic. Um, start with a good reference picture. All right, so I do almost all my work off references. I don't do this off the top of my head. All right, so don't sit down and expect to be able to draw um, a, a really accurate Millennium Falcon off the top of your head because to do that, you would have to have done it quite a few times to memorize where everything is. So <clears throat> start off with our disc. I draw a line through the center. Okay. Where once you've put this other circle in, forgive me, put that other circle in, and then draw a line through the center, and that helps you line up these sections. All right, so my line's a bit rough. Get the idea. Now they don't come all the way out to the side; they fall short. So leave a bit of space. Curve that in. Leave a bit of space again. You can see the edge of the disc here. Curve that in. All right, and this is just building up the three-dimensional shape. It's so easy. Uh, draw a line almost straight, so don't draw it out here because it'll be, unless you're changing the angle of the ship, it'll be off angle. So it's almost straight. It actually comes down in a straight line a little bit, All right, like that. And then you've got your other piece here. Now this piece is really the only part which is kind of tricky, and that's because when it gets to the edge, this bit continues down to a straight section and then these bits are coming out straight so they're coming out at an angle so you have a tiny little wedge in there all right when you draw it out uh, we've got our front section here so we just make sure we're, we're lining up the depth draw lines to that lines down lines down lines down lines down join it up here join it up there now there is another section in here and we'll just rough it in for the moment. Um, we'll worry about that later. Uh, as you can see, I've got my disc not quite wide enough. Right, so this is all whether you're working on paper, whether you're working on digital, all rough it in. Right, so you want to rough it in to figure out where everything's going to go, and then you worry about the detail. What I used to do when I started drawing, and I found it really frustrating, is I'd look, especially on something like this, I'd look at the surface and I'd go, oh, wow, you know, look at all the detail on that. And the first thing I'd start doing is, is adding all these little bits of detail and going in there and going, oh, wow, you know, look at the lines along here and along here and everything. And then before I knew it, I had a heap of disjointed little angles that didn't match up. Uh, so if I continued on and finished the, the ship, it would be all out of proportion. So don't do that straight off. Always work out your rough um, proportions of the ship. Okay. Now this bit here for the cockpit comes down. So if you have a look, basically the ship's divided into wedges. All right, so you've got your, your wedge running along from here. Oh, lines off. Look at that amateur. Oh, I don't know. Running along from there to there. All right, should be further back. Get the idea. Um, and you've got your wedges in sections. Okay, so the easiest way to work out where this goes is to draw a line through the center of your wedge and then move a little bit off to the left of it. And that's where your 
position your cockpit. Alright. Hope that makes sense. It's my first tutorial, guys. Stop being so hard on me. Alright. And that's that's it. Alright, so it's a basic, basic shape. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, from there, what do you do? Well, right, we're happy with the overall proportion. We're looking at a reference photo and we're going, yep, that's pretty close to to what it's like. Okay. Oh, sorry, I skipped a bit. Just to illustrate what I was talking about with that, if you have a look there, that's just a rough sketch, very rough sketch. You can see what I'm talking about. If you look at it from above, you got that in the center. These two sections here run straight across. That comes down your front, all right, but in a straighter line than that. <laughs> and then you've got your cockpit. All right, so if I draw my line through there, that's about half the wedge, and this should actually be a little bit further back. All right. And that's where our cockpit goes, right? So pretty easy. Very, very simple stuff. All right, so if you master basic shapes like squares and things, so if you can go, oh, I can draw a three-dimensional square, like so, you can draw this. All right. It's not, not hard. It just takes a little bit of practice. Where do I go from here? Well, I don't go and start adding all this detail in and you know, do a bit here and a bit there, a bit here. No, you plan it out. All right, so once we're sure we've got our proportions correct, we're looking at our reference. And for example, along this section here, so the side wall, what I do is I break it up into groups. All right, easiest way to do it. So I've got one, two, three, four sections there along there. And then I look at my reference photo, and you can draw it on the photo if you want. You can do whatever you want to the reference. It doesn't matter as long as you can still see the image. Uh, but I know that if I start adding detail in here, where the pipes are going to finish, uh, where they should start up for the next section. So I'm getting the proportions correct. Okay, so for example, this one here is pretty much right in the middle. Uh, and I know where I've started from, okay, and where it should be. All right, to just tidy this up a bit. So that's roughly four proportions, all right? So you want to do it a bit more accurately than that. Best to measure it out. But that's the general idea. All right, so section everything off. So with this bit across here, I'll just go half the length, all right, and look what that does. It pretty much matches up, it's slightly off, but it pretty much matches up with the circle for the detail there, okay. Um, you can quarter this as well. Do it a bit better than that. Okay, so one, two, three, four sections. And there you go. Now, if you're doing it in pencil, <coughs> excuse me, you can lightly draw these in uh, so you can figure out you know, where everything's gonna go and you just erase them as you go. All right, same with this section here. With this, I pretty much just put a cross in it, quarters. All right, so I know what bit goes where. It's much easier to get the proportions accurate when you do it like that. Okay, now that's not a quick process. It took me the better part of a day and a half to actually do this uh, and get all the detail into a point where I was happy with it and my proportions were accurate. So it took me essentially you know, a day and a half to get to here. Um, I haven't done any shading or anything like that, and that's what I want to start covering off. Um, in this section. Okay, so let's just take, touch back on, forgive me, let's just take another quick look at this model. All right, so I've just moved it over a bit. Okay, we've got our Millennium Falcon, right, with all the detail put in. Now there'll be some inaccuracies in there, I'm not perfect, and um, a, lot of the a lot of the time, what I try and draw, instead of drawing every little pipe and everything like that, I'll basically just try and draw the sections that um, I want to shadow or I want to add depth to or uh, things like that. So like the panel lines, everything like that, I draw the panel lines in, but all the pipes and everything like that, I tend to draw the high areas and then leave everything that's going to be dark as a low area. And I'm just going to try and adjust this camera a bit, sorry. Uh, hopefully that's a bit better. Okay, now I keep doing that. So you can have a look there. You know, a lot of the detail looks pretty patchy on the gun, things like that. I've just drawn it in, so I know what's there, 
and I'll bring it to life with the shading. Okay, so the next step that I generally take is to work is to work out where my light's coming from. So in this instance, my light is coming pretty much on this angle. All right, so coming across. So it means it's going to cast a shadow on anything that's raised. It's going to cast a shadow to this side. Okay, and we'll just move with a bigger marker. Sorry, everyone. Amateur hour. Um, so my light's coming from that direction. Uh, my shadow will cast across that way. All right, so it's a three-dimensional object. Looks pretty two-dimensional at the moment because, yeah, we've drawn out the shape, but it hasn't got any shading. So that's our next step. It's to figure out where the light's coming from, figure out where the shade's going to be uh, cast primarily, and uh, then we start from there. Next thing I tend to do is just color it a little bit. All right, so when I was using my Copic pens, um, I'd go in and I'd basically work my highlights, things like that, and then work from light to dark. Uh, now, the process is pretty similar still with my Wacom. I can still do that if I want. What I tend to, to like to do when I'm painting or um, using my Copic pens on uh, Sketchbook Pro, which is what this is, uh, is I just give it a flat color. All right, there's my base color. So I'm going to work everything off that. I'm going to work my highlights off that. I'm going to work my darks off that. All right, it's so pretty, pretty simple. Uh, now, I'll just zoom it back in so you can see a bit more detail. There we go. Okay. All right. We've put our color in. First step I want to do is, I've gone to the wrong section. I want to go to my Copic library. So the Copic library um, is basically the same as your Copic pens that you can buy. So they're like a texter, essentially, um, for artists. You can select your pen colors and go over them and uh, work up your tones from there. So I'm going to start working with my grays. All right, I've already decided I'm not going to show any detail in the cockpit. It's just, uh, it's really too fiddly. Um, I don't think it'd look good if I try and detail and put a little crew in there and all that sort of stuff. I just don't think it's going to look very nice. So I'm pretty much going to shade that out. Uh, but we're going to start with the main body. And we're just going to have a bit of a play until we find the colors we're happy with. So the base I've done in a T1. Let's just see if we can get a map. There matches up a little color puck. So it's uh, T, sorry, T-O. T1 is a little bit darker. And we go T2, turn of gray. Now, you can do this with pencil. You can do it with whatever you want. Um, you don't have to, to worry and go, oh, well, I haven't got 40,000 Copic pens at home. And all that, you know, and they don't get expensive. So uh, you don't have to worry about it. You can do, do the same method using whatever uh, medium you want, pretty much. It's the same process. So... Looking at our light source, and I always like to have a little visual cue just to remind myself. Let's start building up some of the some of the tones. So where's the light going to fall? Well, it's going to fall on this side. I'm going to cast a shadow across here, but all these panel lines are still going to be fairly dark because the light's not going to get down into them, is it? So let's have them a little bit darker. No, don't like that tone. Let's go a bit more. No. See, pressure's getting to me already. See, go back. Love it. And we might actually change our pen as well. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so we've got our little pen here. And we're just going to go over these lines just to add a bit of depth. Now, I'm not too worried about being 100% accurate on it because it is a piece of junk, remember? Uh, it is the Millennium Falcon. It's been around the block. It's uh, seen better days, and it'll make 0.5 past light speed. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm a nerd. All right, so let's just run this through, and we'll basically repeat this process on all the areas that are going to be shaded. And I'm just checking to make sure you can see what I'm doing. I really wish it would stay focused. It just keeps changing its mind, doesn't it? 
I'm going to review the video and make sure it's not too bad. And you can see everything I'm doing. All right, so you can see a lot of my lines. You know, they're not architectural lines. They're not, oh, you know, I've measured out this section with a ruler and done this section with a ruler, etc., etc. It's just adding a bit of detail to the surface, uh, making it look busy, which is what the Millennium Falcon you know, looks like. All right, and we're just going to go down a tone or two and start building up the shadows. So if I was working with my Copix or I was working with a um, graphite, I would be careful when I'm doing this step All right, and just go bit by bit. I'm just going to bring this up so you can see. There we go. All right, go bit by bit and add it and I'll do the same thing when I'm working on my Wacom. All right. Now I actually have people ask me and I'll address this now, oh, you know, have you had any exhibitions? Well the answer is no I haven't. Um, basically since I swapped to digital I've actually found it really hard to get an exhibition. Uh, and that's because when you say you're a digital artist, everyone just automatically assumes that you've got a Photoshop and you get your images into Photoshop and then you manipulate them somehow and bang. Um, now, there are a lot of people out there that do that and it really bugs me. Um, the reason being is because you know, some of them some of them paint in Photoshop, some people draw in Photoshop. I mean I'm using Sketchbook Pro, but you can do genuine art pieces. I'm not saying that people don't, but um, for an example, um, there are photographers that take an image and then they add layers to it and alter the image so much that it's not even really close to what it looked like originally when they took the photo. Um, and they misrepresent the pictures is probably the best way to, to put it. They misrepresent what they've actually done. And, um, you know, some people don't know the difference. And they end up spending a lot of money because they think, oh, well, it's a one on one, you know, look at this photo. What are the odds of that? Well, yeah, the odds of that are pretty slim that they actually took that photo uh, because they've just manipulated it and then told you they've taken that photo. And it really pisses me off because, to be blunt, because not only are they taking advantage of people, um, but artists who work in digital, and there's some amazing artists who work in digital, um, a lot of people are moving to it, um, tend to get a bad rap. Well, at least they do in Australia. Uh, I don't know about other places in the world, but if you look at comic book artists, I mean, a lot of the, the well-known comic book artists tend to work in digital, and what they do is they'll do a drawing and they'll tone it and, and they'll send it off to um, the art director and the art director will go, no, I want you to change this little bit here or whatever and sends it back and tells them what he wants and um, they rework it. And it really looks you know, it really looks good, but it saves them not only a lot of time to do it that way because it's instantaneous. You don't have to courier or, or post the picture over and do all that sort of nonsense. You can just email it. Um, no scanning it, no mucking about. Um, so they get a lot of work done a lot more efficiently, but they're still artists. Um, they're still working how they'd normally work, um, just in a, a slightly different format. Um, but there are people out there that are just wrecking that for everybody, and it makes it hard. So if anyone knows someone who would like to do an exhibition of my digital art, hey, please, I would um, love to do it. I can't seem to find anyone who's interested. And every time I say digital, I go, oh, no, you just Photoshop and hang up. So I <laughs> can't get anywhere at the moment. But that's life, isn't it? All right, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going through, marking the areas uh, where I want a bit of shade, uh, I want a bit of tone. Okay, so that's a step there between here and here, um, which we've drawn in. So that's going to be shaded, and it's going to cast a little bit of a shadow further along. Too busy talking. Not, oh, not really thinking. How about that? Just bash everything. 
Alright, so that's going to be mostly shaded. Okay, so you can see already just that little bit of depth that's coming out. Now, I'm always referring to my reference photo as well, making sure I'm getting it right. But you can see just that little bit of depth um, added to the picture. Right, just by going over those lines, putting in the shade. Right, it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, normally I'd probably do it a little bit neater than what I am. But I just want you to see what I'm talking about. Okay. So that's on an angle. The light's coming from here. That surface is going to be darker. All right. Put in a shadow for the raised sections. All right, that's how you get your three-dimensionality for, for people that are newer to it. Um, add your shadows. Uh, it's a little circle here. Now, this process, it does take a long while to do, so I'm not going to go over the whole model with you today or the whole sketch with you today and um, show you everything, but just to give you an idea, and if you have a look... Oh, Come on, focus, damn it. If you have a look at that section there, all right, you can see the shadow. It's a little bit more effective than if we go to the opposite side, right, where I haven't done it. So that's the deal, all right? Simple stuff, not complicated. You just got to know what you're doing and take your time. Go with it. As I say, if I was doing this with... Um, graphite pencil or with pastel or anything like that, I'd be doing the same, pretty much the same thing. Right, just building it up as we go, making sure we're happy with it. Put my shadow in there. Right. Easy. I want to just darken it up a bit. Now, one thing I used to do with my graphite pencils is I used to smudge them a lot. So I would use uh, like cotton buds or cotton balls, things like that, and just really smudge them out um, to cover a surface area without having to you know, do a lot of cross hatching or whatever and mucking about. So it was quite um, a simple way to do it. And you can still do that essentially with this program. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. Okay, so you get these brush stroke blenders. So I'll just give you an example of that. It's just going to work the surface where I was. Now, it'll work on whatever color you're setting the um, the pen to. So if you've got the pen on the light gray, it'll work the light gray into the dark. Um, and vice versa. So it's just... Just got to figure out where you're going. Oh, how does that look? It's getting a bit better, isn't it? And for all those little areas where I'm not happy with what I've laid down, you know, this is literally what I would do with my graphite. I'd get my little uh, cotton tip, go over it, work it out, okay, cover an area, get rid of the, the parts, which I think I've done too much. Uh, so the process is the same. Okay. So starting, it's coming along. Right. Just smooth that in. Make sure it's nice and uniform. Now you can do that with your Copic pens, really, easy just by getting your coverage right the first time. How's that looking? It's starting to look a bit better, isn't it? So, this video has been going for half an hour. I think that's probably enough of my voice ranting and raving in the background for one session. Let me know what you think of it. Let me know how I can improve it. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'm going to do a, uh, another one uh, straight after this as well, so there'll be a part two as well, where I'll continue on with this method. We'll do another section. I'm not going to do the entire thing for you, um, but we'll do another section so you can see uh, how it builds up, 
and uh, then we'll start on some more detailing and adding a bit more depth and adding weathering and things like that to the ship. All right. So thanks for watching. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, send me a carrier pigeon, inform a friend, tell a neighbor, whatever. Um, I'd really appreciate your support. It'd be great to um, build this channel and uh, keep more of these coming. And don't forget, you can always uh, purchase my art via Etsy or via my Facebook page, um, Andrew's Arts and Models. All right. So I will have some scale models coming very soon, which uh, I'll put up for sale, which I've completed. And uh, I am taking orders at the moment, so I've had a few people requesting uh, some custom builds. So they'll be in the works. So if you are after something custom, um, feel free to make an inquiry. You can certainly have a look at it there. But uh, yeah, pretty basic tutorial so far. So just starting along and I uh, hope you're getting something out of it. And uh, yeah, part two coming very soon. Thanks for watching.